Hello everybody, this is Bangrich and this is MAME, the best screenshot tool for Linux, at least in my opinion. Uh, and MAME is a, a screenshot utility that you can find on GitHub. You can probably find it in your package manager as well. It is uh, created by Nailstroff, this guy, Dalton Nell. Uh, he have also created this slop program which uh, MAME uses to create selections and it's uh, uh, intended to be an improved version of Scrot, which is a very similar program but MAME is in my opinion the best. Uh, so you can take screenshots, you can select stuff, you can, it will include the cursor by default, it will not make weird multi-monitor extra things and you can even do this stuff, I don't know what that is. Here we can also see the package managers. Arc Linux, Debian, Void, FreeBSD, NetBSD, OpenBSD, Crux, Gento, Nix OS, GNU, GUIX, Raven Ports and Fedora. So it should be available in your package manager. Um, it's very easy to use, we can see here, or let's, let's, let's do it the proper way, you know. What's the proper way? It's the manual. So the easiest way is to just uh, write MAME and then the path to a file and that will create a full screen screenshot uh, with the cursor included uh, at the current path. And then you can uh, specify things like uh, if, if you want a certain monitor, if you want a ping or JPEG, if you want a specific window, if you want uh, a delay uh, before the screenshot is taken. If you want to hide the cursor, you can change the quality and select here, which uh, gives us the ability to select a, a, a part of the screen or a specific window. So it's re it's very easy and a good interface. So let's let's start by just taking a, a, a sample screenshot here. We can say TMP snap. There. Now it should have created a snap screenshot in the TMP directory here. There we have something and we open that and here we can see the full screenshot with the cursor included. Uh, we do this with the select option instead here. Now we get to select something, we can select best. There, now, now we get a screenshot of just the best here. Another way to use the select option is to just click on a window, for instance Thunar here, and that will create a, a, a screenshot of just that window when you don't drag a rectangle. But here you can see the, the cursor is included. In my opinion this is a bit uh, annoying when you do selections, so I always use uh, um, hide cursor. There, and now we get a screenshot without a cursor. I think the, the first one I did, I accidentally just dragged uh, and it, the screenshot consisted of, of just a pixel. It's quite sensitive, this clicking and dragging, but you can set that as well in, in the options. But here we, we basically get all, got all we need. Or one thing here, it, it prints this uh, uh, error message if you don't have OpenGL hardware acceleration. And you can remove that with, um, uh, let's see, here, the quiet option, or just Q. There, and now we don't get the error message, we can select this window. Yeah, great. Now let's hook this up to our um, snap script that we have here. Let's print this command here, because this command have all the different options we need, I think. Uh, right now, when we execute snap here, I just get a menu. Uh, we select something, it prints the selection to standard out. I can also execute the menu with my key binding, super shift C, and we get the menu. Great. Should also mention I just updated i3 menus and now the, the things that didn't work in the last video works and I also improved some small things, whatever. Um, 
but our script exits here. So now we need to, to take action, action depending on the action selected. Uh, we can do that with our good friend case. Case. Uh, ah, and now we also need an action. So let's store the uh, result here in a variable. There. Now, uh, instead of printing this as standard out, we will get whatever we select in, in the variable action. And then we can make a case for action in. And this, this is a nice thing by, by adding the uh, actions or options in an array like this, then you can just copy paste it into a case, for instance, like this. And do something like this, this, this. And I also like to create a default option and then ESAC. There, and now we have, uh, have our uh, test here. But now it doesn't do anything. We need to add some, some sort of actions here. I think we should also uh, uh, import our error function library thing here that we created a couple of videos ago. So I will copy this whole function, the whole file basically, but without the shebang. It, it, if you by accident paste a, a shebang, it's no big deal, but let's not include it now. And then go to snap. Um, and I like to paste, have, have, have this at the bottom of the script here. But now we get this, you know, you cannot declare a function uh, after you, you invoke it or call it. So then let's create a main function. Pass every command line argument to that, and then we do main is now a function. Looks like this. Got this stuff inside of it. There, and that means I can now use this error function um, here in my case uh, case thing here. Let's do this. Okay, super shift C. Nothing doesn't work. Snap. Select something, full screen, no cursor. Error, screenshot, full screen, no cursor. It's printed to the terminal because we, we, we launched the script from the terminal. But if we launch it from the key binding, select something, we get a notify send. Great. Okay, but that's not the action we want to, to print an error. Uh, one, one interesting thing here is uh, that if we execute the menu but then press escape, we just get error here because that will default now to the default action. Um, so here we could uh, say uh, no action selected aborted. But the other actions here we don't want to X error and exit. And remember this E flag, it makes it so that it's a fatal error, so to speak. So it will also exit the script. Um, and we don't want that. We want to use our main uh, function here now. We could start with selection. <coughs> and also this, this error message, it doesn't time out. You have to uh, close it manually. So now if we hit super shift C, I select selection, mouse cursor change, and now we can select something, we select this part here, and now it created the screenshot, TMP snap. I think it's a good idea to store this temporary file path uh, in a variable somewhere. We could actually do it here as a super global, so to speak, so temp file is equal to tmp slash snap and then we change this to temp file 
it's good to have this in a variable. We will pass this file around a bit here later in the script. Uh, and we could also create actions here now for full screen and one for full screen, no cursor. And no cursor is of course uh, just with a hide cursor and normal full screen is with cursor. Because I actually like screenshots with the mouse uh, cursor visible. I think it's underrated. The cursor is also a thing you can rise and uh, show off to people. Whatever, whatever, whatever. So now selecting full screen. Nothing happened. It should have created our... No? Ah, that's because we have the select option there. Shouldn't have that in our full screen uh, options. There. Full screen. Now it just takes a full screen screenshot for us. <coughs> Great. And with the mouse cursor, and I don't think I have to demo the, the without cursor option here. So now we got a nice little script here. Um, and if we don't select anything at all, we will get the error message here and it will exit the script. So escape, error, no action selected, aborting. Next up, uh, what I want to do now, I, sure, you could just do this and then if, if we wanted to uh, add this uh, file as an argument to upload to Ulf and upload it or something, but often when you create screenshots uh, or screencasts and stuff, it it's really nice to be able to preview the screenshot or whatever it is before you upload it. In case you have uh, uh, missed some sensitive information or just want to, to preview it before you send it to someone, you know. And one really easy way to do so is to, if we close this window here now, this uh, SXIV, and now if I take a screenshot, Let's do a selection. Let's select this power control window. It created the screenshot, but we don't get any preview or anything. We have to, whoops, manually open the file. Yeah, there it is. It's, <laughs> it was weird since the screenshot consisted of the same thing as a window. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, we could, could, could just do this, uh, SXIV then temp file and then let's do a notify send here sxiv closed yes put that in quotes super shift c whoa ah it weirded out a bit here Sorry for that. So, whoa, what's going on? Okay, let's do it again. Super Shift C. It's weird. It's like it opens the menu before we. Ah, aha, we have put it in the wrong order here. We have this outside of the main function. So th 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 uh, this can just be interesting to see what's going on here. Why why is it behaving like this? We have the main function here with our uh, that pops up the menu and stuff. After that, I accidentally put this as SXIV and notify send here. This is outside of the main function, and this is actually the first thing that is executed here in the script, because this main function is just read into memory, so to speak. And then it reads these comments, doesn't do anything. Then it reads this error function into memory, and then it executes the main function. But that is done after this part, so we should move this to here. Save, Super Shift C, get the menu, we select selection, we can select a window, it opens it in SXIV, I close SXIV, we get the, the uh, notification here, which is great, because that means this script holds here when we open SXIV like this. Uh, the script will not continue until this uh, uh, window or this uh, process is uh, terminated or closed. <clears throat> and that's a good way to create a preview window like this. Uh, now I'm not sure here. Let, let, let's do it again and see. 
selection, I select this, press F for respect. Uh, yeah, no, it works. Some, uh, most of the time, and in most setups, it will focus the window here. It will focus the SXIV window. But I think this is an i3 setting uh, to focus a new window or an active window or whatever it is. And if you have like focus following mouse, then you might get a different focus. Like it will open the preview, but uh, a different window might have focus. Now it do have the right focus. But I think this is kind of important because most of the, most of the time you open a screenshot like this and then you just, uh, yeah, it's, it's fine. Uh, and then close the window with F4 is my kill, uh, kill key binding. But if for some reason the wrong window have focus uh, and, and you take a screenshot like this and then you just press F4 to kill the window, but the preview window doesn't have focus and you accidentally kill uh, Sublime here or maybe even worse Vivaldi which takes 10 seconds to open again. That's not good. So to make sure that SXIV uh, really have focus, we can do a little dirt hack with our good friend X2 tool or i3 get. Because SXIV has a command line argument that lets you uh, change the name, which is the title of the window. And if we do so, then we can uh, easily identify the SXIV window. We, because, sure, we could just do a, a i3 message focus, but that could uh, also that's not 100% reliable since uh, if we have multiple SXIV windows open already when we do this, then it might focus the wrong window, and that's not good either. So let's use this name flag here, and uh, uh, we can create this snap pre view so this should create a window here called snap preview let's see if this works now make a selection select thunar there and then we can do our good friend um, wmctrl lx X and here we can see snap preview. Ah, th this is good. It's actually the instance name. I thought it was the title, but it is the instance that is uh, renamed to snap preview. So that's great. <coughs> so all we need to do here is is uh, i3 message uh, instance equals snap preview focus right but this will not work you know since we execute sxiv here then it will not continue with the script uh, till till we close the the window we could execute it in the background but then we lose the functionality of waiting for the window and I actually want that so what we can do is to do this we put this command instead in the background focus snap preview but this will not work since here it focuses a window that it creates on the next line so the window doesn't exist here and that's where uh, x2 tool come in we do a search class name which is instance preview and then we do sync and this will actually wait till this window uh, appears uh, and then it will focus it. Uh, but this will not work either because now it, the script will hang here and wait for the window to appear. But if we put both of these commands uh, in the background by putting them inside of a, a block like this. Then we will run this in the background, executes SXIV, the script will halt here, but this is still running in the background, X2 tool will, will find the window and focus it for us. I know this looks like a lot of, of weird stuff just to focus a window that most of the time already have focus, but believe me, I learned this the hard way. When the window doesn't get focus, it's really easy to close the wrong window and that's just annoying and now we have uh, ma made sure that doesn't happen if this works now. So super shift C selection select this 
and yeah, it have focus. Press F4. It looks like everything worked at least. It, it, it's hard to, to test this, but, but you can. Or what we could do is do a notify send here. Uh, found SXIV. And we could even, just to make it clear, sleep here for, for two seconds or something. So now take a screenshot selection, select Thunar, found SXIV, which is weird because it shouldn't find it. Which means that it doesn't really work. It's good we tested. Um, maybe this sync option needs to be before here. Selection. Select this. Sleep two seconds. And there we get it. Yeah, the sync option needs to be before the criteria. Great, now we know everything is working um, and uh, maybe we should continue in the next uh, video with uh, taking action uh, depending on uh, if we are happy with the preview or not. But this is a good introduction to MAME and I highly recommend that program, it's, it's really really good. And also the, the slop pro program which we never have to execute here but you, you can just run slop also like this. And then you get this crosshair, you can select something, and then it prints the, the uh, geometry that you selected to standard out. And this can be used to create all kinds of cool dirt tags with. So highly recommend these two programs. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.